autopilot makes driving such a breeze. Lane change, yes. We have now arrived at the Red Deer Supercharger. Um, we have been supercharging probably around 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, um, did a pee break and um, caught up on a little bit of eating. So this is the first time we are taking our Model X up to Edmonton. And we did it mostly in autopilot. And what I could say is that um, Autopilot 2.0 has become much smoother in the past updates. So as um, Elon promised, it has become better. Yes, um, on some roads, it doesn't do its automatic lane change. But in this case, um, it's on the Alberta Highway 2, QE2, from Calgary to Edmonton. Um, it does the automatic lane changes. So yeah, this is our Model X 90D. It's probably, it's the first road trip video I'm doing of this car. I'll just show you, it's the Autopilot 2.0. So it has the sensors here, uh, not sensors, the camera here. Another camera up here. And it has the Autopilot 2.0 type front camera. Um, that's my dash cam. So we got the front windows tinted, as you can see. That's the 20% tint. Um, you can hardly see my wife inside. Um, I think you can see an outline of her. And I got the front Expel wrapped. It's really sweet. And it's the seven-seater configuration. And it's not the older seven-seater. So this is the one where you can um, like manually fold it and it's the one that folds flat. So this is the newer configuration. Yep, so that one folds flat. If you um, move it back a little, it should fold flat. Um, this is what it looks like um, when the rear seats are folded flat. In terms of consumption, this is what we have done so far. Um, I have been cruising at 120 to 124 kilometers per hour. Miles per hour, that's around, what, 75 to 77 miles per hour. So, and we have been doing 190 watt hours per kilometer. I'll have the conversion into miles somewhere in the screen. Yeah, so that's for the past 25 kilometers. Past 50 kilometers is 209, and um, it's not bad if you're cruising at 120. Um, temperature is right around zero. Right now it's minus one, so that's probably, what, 30 degrees Fahrenheit? Yeah, it's right at freezing. So we're just about to leave to Edmonton, but before we go, I'm going to let you know that I'm just proud to say that Autopilot 2.0 has almost caught up to autopilot 1.0 autopilot 1.0 is still superior but i can really feel the difference in this latest update current software update now is 2017.50.3 so that's the current software update it used to not change lanes the lane changes used to be so choppy with the autopilot 2.0 um, the difference is getting smaller and smaller so we have had the autopilot 1.0 for a little over a year and we have driven over 60,000 kilometers in it that's whatever it is in miles down here and wow i'm just amazed at the improvement of autopilot 2.0 there's still some catching up to do but we're getting closer driving the model x you can really really feel the difference in terms of the visibility you see this is not a sunroof this is the whole windshield all the way up to the top of my head yeah so it gives amazing visibility and it makes it feel 
so much bigger inside than the car really is. Yes, it doesn't have this, you know, bar that blocks. The only thing inconvenient here is, you know, without um without this without the windshield stopping here and you know this little bar that goes here or whatever you call it i don't know what you call it um what is it put it in the comment section below please correct me um you're unable to um you know just put down the sun visors so in this case you have to get the sun visors from the side and then clip it here so that's the only inconvenient part okay so i guess our supercharging is done onwards to edmonton Here's a very economical car, sarcastic tone, that's a Hummer, I think, I don't know, I couldn't, there's no badge, it's either the H2 or H3, yeah, so there's, there couldn't be a more different car to the Tesla Model X than a Hummer, shaped like a brick and it guzzles gas like crazy. We're now at our new destination. <laughs> we were supposed to go to the Edmonton Ice Castles, but all the tickets were sold out and the website said that you cannot chance it because if it's sold out online, you're not able to get tickets. Well, God's plan is always the best plan. Sometimes we don't understand the reason why things happen, but here it is and here we are. We're now at the Reynolds Alberta Museum. This one had a whopping 22 horsepower. I don't know what $1,300 is um, in today's dollars, but that feels like a lot. An old Buick. Yes, this is a 1910. So this is interesting. The McLaughlins actually um, built the Chevys in Canada back in back in the day a hundred years ago This is 1918 So if anyone is asking what is a horsepower actually it is 165 pounds times 200 feet divided by one minute James Watt Found that a good draft horse could pull 165 pounds 200 feet in a minute so that became the equivalent of one horsepower. The controls are so much different before. No seat belts. And look at these tiny seats on the back. In the back. Mm -hmm. People then were much slimmer, I guess. This is a 1920 McLaughlin Buick Model K645. Talk to my sister-in-law, honey. Look, this is close to your house. It's near 14th Ave and Broad Street. <laughs> they they used to sell these cars over there. Very cool. This one is a doozy. So this is a the famous Duesenberg Phaeton so look at how long this thing is look at that hood oh my gosh this was luxury way back then so 
this Duesenberg, way back when, this is a 1929 Duesenberg Phaeton Royale. Just look at these specs. 265 brake horsepower with a top speed of 187 kph. Wow. And this was expensive for the day. That was 20,000 US dollars. That's a lot of money back then. And look how beautiful they kept it. Still really, really shiny. You know? If you were seen in one of these, this is the type of car where you can say, I have arrived. This is a 1941 Cadillac Series 62 convertible sedan. Just look at the thing. Look at all that chrome. Oh my gosh. This is the 1934 Chrysler. Oh no, sorry. 1935 Chrysler Airflow sedan. So this was the world's first aerodynamically designed motor car. Wow. So this is the part of the museum where they show the decline of McLaughlin. You know, my mentor always says, success is never permanent. This one is a 1947 Oldsmobile Special Club Sedan Series 66, 100 horsepower, a 3.9 liter six cylinder. Both of our years. This one is a Buick 41. Model 41D Special Series 40. Wow. In 1905, <laughs> there was a discussion between which car should you buy. Should you buy an electric car, a gasoline powered car, or a steam powered car? This is a 1912 Hop Yeats electric coach. Yes, so actually, the electric car is older than you think. So it's a four passenger vehicle and it had a 48 volt Westinghouse motor and it had 30 cells in three trays. So there's no specs about the range and the speed of the thing. But this is similar to, um, I would say this looks similar to Jay Leno's um, Baker electric car that he has featured in um, Jay Leno's garage. I should have a link somewhere here to it. I should be able to put one up. What's amazing is over here, <laughs> um, it explains the benefits of electric cars. So it says here, that the case for the electric vehicle can be made by any city resident who has put up with the noise and stink of steam and gasoline powered automobiles. Yeah, so this one is much quieter. It says here, it shows the benefits of the electric vehicle. The electric car is silent, smooth running, clean, and so easy to operate. Right? No awkward fumbling with the clutch and transmission, no dangerous building up of steam in the boiler and no bone rattling vibrations from backfiring gasoline engines and this is still true today but it's getting better with the tesla supercharging network expanding tesla supercharger network expanding so while it is true that ju just at present it can be difficult to find recharging stations i'm confident that the network will expand throughout the country in the very near future this minor inconvenience will be a thing of the past. So, actually, this is what will change and what will make the electric car the future of motoring. Over here, the main merit of the gasoline-powered car, it's just, um, it's just explained here over the electric car nor must he, like those hampered by electric motors, have to plan his trip according to the location of battery charging stations. With this being... With the electric charging network expanding constantly every day, 
with new charging stations added whether by Tesla or any other um, network then the advantage of the um, gasoline powered car will go away that's the only advantage it has um, the ga electric cars are smoother they go through um, they go through any sort of climate they're the best cars to drive in the winter and they're very very cheap to run and now they're getting cheaper and cheaper to purchase especially with the release of the model 3 and the new Nissan Leaf coming up yeah but anyway the internal combustion engine has served us well in, for the past hundred so years but there will be a resurgence in electric vehicles Wow and the man Reynolds donated all of this to the province of Alberta for us to enjoy amazing we're sitting now in a helicopter right underneath a DC-3 <laughs> Reynolds Museum of Aviation so cool, right love? Yeah. <laughs> Diane is like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That was such a great museum visit, right love? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so now we're on our way back home. We're gonna go to church and what are we gonna drive? We're gonna drive quite the coolest car ever made in history. Hey guys, I'm with a viewer of mine. Um, I met him for the first time at the Red Deer Supercharger. His name is Sean. And, Hi. Um, <laughs> and he has a Model S. Um, tell us about your car. Uh, this is a 2014 P85. Ooh. Yes. Uh, Just this, like Bjorn's car. Yes, this was, uh, <laughs> this was a service loaner out of Toronto. I actually bought this in Toronto.